Okay, guys. Right, let's um, let's get ourselves looking into INAV. And right, we're not going to break down every single element because you don't need to. And as long as you go through this stage of we set up the firmware, you get the firmware installed. Okay. Um, let me just rewind a moment or two. Why am I showing you this like this? Why am I not just building something and we're just touching in on elements here and there? Um, because you get to get familiar with the software. And unless you've got a flight controller, you can't, you, you, if you can't connect anything in, you can't even get really access into the software. It only opens up uh, with populated um, um, uh, values when there's a flight controller connected to it and you have the appropriate firmware on there. So this is the bit you don't really get to see. Um, so okay, we've already, you can go back through these other videos doing this and we've already gone through our setup. We've looked at the calibration and we've also seen in the CLI how we can just pull out big chunks of um, settings and reapply them to our new firmware updates. Not all the settings, of course. We set up a mixer, we go in, we set up a preset. Um, on this one, we're using a six inch free frame quadcopter, 2207, 17 kV motors. It's not exactly what I've got, but it's close enough. It's the closest thing here to what I've got. And from that, it will just mean um, just trimming up settings if necessary. Uh, we've gone in, we've looked at our ports, and we know that, um, well, one, let me just tell you this from the start. This USB VCP, this is the connection into your flight controller. So never switch this off. Not unless you want to start learning how to uh, set up a serial port to get through and make these adjustments to open this port, this particular port again. It's a pain in the backside. Don't switch it off. You can use from UART 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 on here. And I'm glad to say that all these UARTs you can use. It's not like that on all um, flight controllers. Sometimes to do one, you're going to miss out on another. But a lot of that's been, you know, these Matek boards are good. Uh, good for that sort of thing. So as you can see in here, look, mine, I've got a UART 1. I've got my GPS on there. And these serial ports, uh, basically what they are is uh, you've got power. You've got um, your ground. You've got your, your plus 5 volts. For most things, you might have plus 3.3 for, you know, um, one thing we're not going to go into because the majority of things now are just the 5 volts. And, and then you've got your, you've got your, um, your data ports. So you basically got a, a two, a two port, a, 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 um, a transmit and a receive. And when you have a transmit and receive to connect, you're going to connect transmit to receive and receive to transmit. Okay, that's just the way it goes around. Don't try and put transmit on transmit and receive on receive. It won't work like that. The only one that will work like that is when you go and put S bus onto S bus and current onto current, that sort of thing. But when it comes to these UARTs, you've got to transmit, receive, and you just connect. Uh, transmit to receive and receive to transmit. Yep. So that's simple enough, right? I mean, it, and it is. Uh, we've got a, a serial RX on here because on channel three on a UART, I'm using um, just the transmit and receive for my my serial receive, and as I'm using the Crossfire protocol, I don't have to play around with the S bus or anything like that. Uh, my next one down here is not even being used, and then UART five is where the smart audio is, and that just allows me to use my sticks on the um, transmitter to be able to get into my settings on my on-screen display. Let me just turn the HD preview off. Turn it off on the screen there. Um, and that, yeah, that, that just means I can use the sticks and make lots of adjustments from pitch tuning to accelerometer to recalibrating things, including accelerometer. Uh, I mean, there is a lot of settings that you can change, but a lot of them you won't need to. To get up in the air, you know, basically, if you just go through these steps I'm showing you, you'll be able to get up in the air and that's um, and that's that's a great place to progress from. Um, so we're going to go into our configuration now. A lot of this you won't need to change. There will be some things that you'll need to address, and a lot of this, like, is just set up. 
is just the way it is. It's, it's already pre-set up like this. So, but you may need to choose your um, GPS. I'm using U Blocks. Uh, I don't even know if it's U Block Seven, but I know that because it's U Blocks, I can use uh, U Block Seven. The difference between U Blocks and U Block Seven is there are going to be other things, I'm sure, but you've got a higher refresh rate. So the frequency of it looking and um, having data transmit and receive from the satellite, oh sorry, receive data from the satellite, is 10 times a second rather than 5 times a second. U block 7, 10 times, and U blocks 5 times. But a lot of this is going to be in for you. So you set up your GPS module there, uh, ground assistance type, just auto detect. You don't really need to change a lot of these things. Um, the VTX side of things you probably won't even be playing with and by the time you get to that stage you've probably done a video on it anyway. Down this side a lot of these things are already pre-set up, these other features like stop motors on low throttle. You might not want to do that if you want to zip up into the air, drop the throttle to zero and then come down smoothly. You need a bit of throttle speed there to, to do that. To be honest with you, a lot of these parts and this kind of a a separate video. This is just to give you a summary of what you're going to be looking at and what's going to be actually done for you so you don't have to think, oh my life, how do I change all these settings? How do I know which ones to go for? Um, you're going to enable your motors and servo output. That would have been done back here in the outputs page. Uh, this is so you can see the motors are working on the bench and bits and pieces. Uh, CPU based SPR, let's forget about that. On screen display, on yes please. You know, you've got these permanently enabled air modes. Uh, this sort of thing will be down to your choosing once you get comfortable with these um, these features being used. Then you can decide, hey, yeah, I like that, or no, I don't like that, I want that one all the time, I don't want that one all the time. I'm just trying to give you a, a little look at what you're going to be looking at. So that's what it's like on the configuration page. We've got a fail safe. This is an absolute must you've got to get set up, but do not do not have a badly set up craft and then rely on things like return to home to work. That's not how it's going to work properly. You're going to set your craft up first. You know, you're going to get it set up, get it flying, you know, within the bounds of the firmware, within your, sk your skills, and then you can be uh, ensuring that your automated system is working but you need your bird working uh, pretty much manually to start off with okay and so you'll have you know fail safe settings like one is just to drop out the air Pfft, really don't want to use that uh, another one is the land safe and then just dropping out the air but the other one here is the return to home which is where i got mine set uh, because my i know that my compass and everything set up okay and like i said when i get in the field i'll do a calibration in that area just to make sure um, that it's okay it's the best you can do really is to calibrate um, you know before you take off and make sure you've got a good connection to those satellites uh, and then there's a, a, a an option here to do nothing you don't want to do nothing Right, PID tuning we're not going to get into because PID tuning, once you select your, your mixer, which is for this quad, right, quad X, and then you, um, then you, then you select your um, preset, that's going to configure your ballpark figure PIDs. Not ballpark figure, these guys have been doing this for a while now and they're going to set you up with a pretty good setup to get going with. Any little tweaks you may wish to do, you can do, but you're going to get a pretty good setup just to get going with because you know these guys are professionals and they're doing a really good job. Uh, we've got our advanced tuning now. You probably will want to just play around in here a little bit and let's just get this up. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of stuff here for multi rotor and navigation settings. Now, again, I haven't touched this, this is just the way it is from me setting up my firmware. So, and this is what I want you to see. I don't want you to think I've been in here changing loads of things. I've, you know, I've recopied and pasted my ports and bits and pieces in and there. Uh, on screen display. And, but I've not been in here and changed any of this yet because this is what I go over manually and check inside this area. And um, we're going to look for things like user control mode at him. Right, I'm getting a quad X. Uh, we got our navigation speed. This is uh, 300 centimeters. So that's three meters a second. But it's not particularly very fast at all. 
So these sort of things, like if you, uh, let's, let's just say, if you left that at now at three meters a second and you went up in the air, you flew away a little bit and you thought, oh, returns home. You flick returns home. That's going to come back. You're going to be sat there waiting for quite a while for it to come back. So it's going to depend on your craft, what you've built, and the sort of speeds, and you're going to have to work out what your e economic speed of flying is yeah. uh, for your craft. So then you'll start tuning in how fast you want this to be coming back. Uh, you may even do quick little tweaks on the day. It may be a little bit windy than you think, so you might need to have a little bit of extra power on this and give it a few extra uh, meters uh, a second, maybe, to get yourself back if you're going against the wind a bit. But these are all the things uh, you'll be considering when you go out for your flight anyway. Um, <clears throat> Uh, okay, I think I'll be good to go up. No, so I'm just going to turn this off. Just, just a quick on and I fly up. I didn't really do that. I left the uh, the connector in, but it'll be good. It's just because the ESCs are complaining, saying, hey, we're here. And that's also something that you can use as a bit of an alarm. So if you drop it in a field somewhere and as you're getting up and you can't find it, you might hear those ESCs kick in. Uh, mine are set for 10 minutes. And then they kick in and you've got that tone, that, that, that little noise that you can hear out there in the field. You might be able to find your craft, so it can be a bit annoying, but it's there for a reason. Uh, now, on the right-hand side here, multi-rotor braking mode configuration, I wouldn't touch any of that. I don't have braking on my ESCs anyway, um, so I can't use any of that. And I don't know if you're going to be using that, but for you guys who are using braking on your ESCs, you don't need to be watching this video. Uh, return to home settings. This is one of the great ones. This is where you get to learn with your return to home. You don't have to go out that far to be playing around with this. So you can have at least, and that's going to be the return to home altitude. And this is a thousand centimeters, which is a hundred meters. A um, thousand centimeters is 10 meters, isn't it? Yes, it is. Sorry. <laughs> it's 10 meters high. Um, so yeah, so you can have at least 10 meters high current which would be whatever whatever altitude you're at at the time so you're in a field it's an open field you can see the craft in front of you 20 feet off the ground you can hit return to home and it will come return to home at 20 feet off the ground yeah um, i wouldn't try and do it too low depending on if you've worked out which way it turns and whether it dips down as it's turning or goes up as it's turning yeah once you work that one out then you can start playing around with that return to home a bit closer and closer to the ground if you feel the need but I would say to you, um, to start off with, I'd use current because then you know that, oh, it's that high. When I hit return to home, it's going to stay that high. So you can see if it goes up, you can see if it does anything untoward in that short distance at that, um, at that uh, low height. Right, so we've got fixed max at least or at least linear descent. Uh, climb regardless of position and the sensors, override return to home, tail first so you can come you can come return to home with a quadcopter with a multi-rotor backwards if you wish not with an airplane uh, always return after or never fail safe uh, fail safe i normally do my fail safe only because i prefer to get it close to me and then bring it into land myself uh, yeah and then on the right hand side there's a whole bunch of stuff here about uh, waypoints and just general navigation but that's you know you've got to go deeper into this stuff because we're only halfway through this thing and i've got to call it 15 minutes as the video um so from this we're going to logic conditions and programming i don't touch any of this i don't touch any of this uh, because you just don't need to at this stage, but there's going to be a lot of facilities in this that you're going to be able to use, a lot of extra features. I think it's the way forward with this navigational flight controlling, you know, like the, like a compass and um, doing your yeah, missions and bits and pieces like that. Another 10 sections to go through, but that'll be in the next video tomorrow. Catch you in the next one, guys. Cheers for watching.